Two flat metal plates are held a small distance apart by means of insulating pads as shown in this figure. So here we see two metal plates and they're separated by some insulation pads, right? Uh, they're saying that explain how the plates could act as a capacitor. So we know for a capacitor, we have two metal plates that are separated apart and you apply some potential difference to these two metal plates. When you do that, when you apply that potential difference between the two plates, it causes the charges to be separated on, on these plates. So for example, if this is plus, this would, this would be negative, and these charges would be separated because they would be sitting on each of the plates. Now, when these charges are separated, that separation of charges causes energy to be stored inside this capacitor, right? So how can these plates act as a capacitor? We can apply some potential difference across the plates, which would cause charge separation, which would in turn lead to uh, energy stored. Next, the arrangement of in figure 6.1 has a capacitance of C. The arrangement is connected into the circuit as shown in this figure. So here is the circuit and they're saying when the two-way switch is moved to position A, the capacitor is charged so that the potential difference across it is V across this capacitor. When the switch moves to the position B, the capacitor fully discharges through a sensitive emitter. So the current goes through the, or the charges flow to the emitter and these, so they're leaving the capacitor, therefore it's discharging. The switch moves repeatedly between A and B so that the capacitor charges and then discharges with frequency F, right? So they're saying that this switch goes here and then goes here, so it oscillates between the two and so the capacitor charges and discharges. So they're saying that show that the average current I in the emitter is given by this expression over here. Now. We know that the current I is equal to the product, uh, the ratio of uh, the charge that flows in the wire divided by the time, how fast the charge will flow. So we can, we know that Q is also equal to C times V. So we can replace from this uh, Q over T. You know, one over T is defined as the frequency. So this expression becomes Q times F. So I is basically the product of the charge times the frequency. Now you just put this in terms of Q which gives you I over F. So this means we get I over F for Q is equal to CV and rearrange this to get I equals F times CV and hence we have shown this expression. Next part says for a potential difference V of 180 volts and the frequency F of the switching, which is 50 hertz, the average current I in the emitter is 2.5 microamperes. We're required to calculate the capacitance uh, in picofarads of the parallel plates. So the capacitance C, which is if I go back at this expression, can be found as I over V times F. Now we have the current, 2.5 microamperes, we have the frequency, we have the voltage as 180 as well. So this would be 2.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 for micro and then you have amperes. Voltage is 180 times 50 hertz. So the math gives you 280 into 10 raised to power minus 6 farads or you can, uh, sorry, uh, 280 into 10 raised to power minus 12 farads. And this is 280 picofarads. The next part says the second capacitor is connected into the circuit and the two capacitors are connected in parallel. So it would look something, so if you connect another capacitor, it would look something like this in parallel to this capacitor. Now they're saying state and explain the change if any in the average current on the emitter. Now, if I remember, if you connect two capacitors in parallel to each other, the total capacitance or the net capacitance increases. So in parallel, net capacitance increases. If the net capacitance would increase, that would mean that greater charge is capable to being stored on the plates of the capacitor. So if there is greater charge being stored on the plates of the capacitor, then the current would basically uh, increase in the emitter. So in parallel plates, uh, parallel net capacitance increases, the 
charge stored increases which would imply that the net current on the emitter would increase as well.